What's up everybody? Bushy here. What? Okay, no, let's stop that. The last two videos I was talking about custom-made DIY homemade LED lights for home automations. In my case, Home Assistant. I showed you how I created this nice little PCB uh, with keycards and then put ESP Home onto it and integrated it into Home Assistant. Worked really well, it was really nice. I love it. And then the last video I was looking at WLED. It's a, it's a different approach to the ESP family. It's a different project, but uh, very similar as well, where you have a huge variety of effects uh, and also other things that you can tweak and influence. And I was trying to find out if it is actually better for me than ESP Home or not. And I think I really liked it, but I think ESP Home is much simpler and better suited for me. And in this video, I would like to go step by step and overhaul the light that I was also you know, teasing in the last video doing this gesture, which is this one. It's the ever first built light that I built for this ESP light series. Um, if you notice a similarity to the light that is sitting in my background, you're absolutely right, because it's the same foundation and only the front part, um, the, the light shade is different and the internal light Former, so that light is not spilling between the different segments. Yeah, and in this video, I would like to go down, double down and bring ESP home onto this, defining the entire program in its shortness, because that's all it takes. And yeah, make it work for me uh, so I can actually use this uh, nice little light that indicates for my kids, come in, everything is fine, or stop and stay outside because I'm in a meeting or when I'm actually streaming, I can uh, light up the on-air sign, which is just a nice touch for everybody to know when something is going on or it's actually very boring and you can just come in. Okay, let's have a peek inside how I built this. All right, let's actually open it. So it should be very easy to pop it open. That is just a two colored, um, 3D printed shade. It is white on the back and then in the front it is um, Galaxy Black, I think it's PLA. Cruciment, very nice, very nice material. And then for the light, you can see that there is this light former and the nice thing about this light former is that you can take it out. I wanted to have a, I wanted this to be a generic foundation to build those lights and then be able to just swap and mix and match those light formers and the top shades and be able to bring it to different yeah, symbols and, and things that I could be able to do with this in a very simple and nice way. So you slide it back in and now the lights are perfectly seg segmented and separated from each other, not spilling over to other segments and that worked actually really, really nice. So the strip itself that you can see is winding and is interconnected. So only I'm, I'm bridging the gaps here, but it is one, one strip essentially going all the way across the entire uh, backside of the panel. It is a WS2812, let me lie, 12, yeah, WS2812. It has four, is that actually true? Yeah, it, <laughs> it is. It has four different light modes, so you can have R, G, and B for red, green, and blue, and a fourth light for a white, pure white LED color, which is really nice because that is uh, not, not such a cold white. It's usually a very warm white, and it gives you the flexibility to be either RGB generated white, which is a bit more bluish, or have the uh, nice warm white. So for the electronics, that's very simple. The biggest one uh, is a capacitor here that offsets any of the voltage fluctuations that are generated by the LED switches, by the LEDs switching, I should say. Um, and then here, this is a level shifter. <coughs> and then this is only a level shifter to switch from 3.3 uh, volt of the ESP, which is this one here, to the five volts of the LED strip. Yeah, and for the ESP, that is a very, very famous ESP-01. It's all over the internet, it's a very simple, basic one. I think you have two pins 
uh, to to um, to control it. And this is only a carrier board doing the voltage generation from 5 volts back to 3.3. And that's it. And with that, let's get down and start writing our little program for this ESP. So I did a bit of the legwork already to write down all the necessary building blocks that are necessary for each and every ESP home project. I gave it a name. This one is called door sign. It is the internal name and then also a friendly name for something like a home assistant to register to via this friendly, friendly name. Uh, actually, I think I could even put a space here. I'm not sure. Leave it out for now. Um, it's an ESP8266 in the form of an ESP01 module. And I think this 1M stands for one uh, megabit of storage. I have the logger here again. I defined an API password to uh, register against Home Assistant with the password. The over-the-air update is uh, password is defined here and my Wi-Fi credentials are hidden behind those terms uh, in my secrets file. Now, the next fundamental building block that we need is the strip, defining the LED strip. And this is this. So it is determined as a light and the platform is NeoPixel Bus. That is a generic term for those strip lights with three pins, for example. I gave it an ID because we need to reference this um, parent LED strip then from the individual segments. So this is now for the entire strip. We get down, for example, the number of LEDs. I did the counting already. We have 45 here. Uh, it's 11, no, sorry, it's nine LEDs per row and we have five rows in total, so 45. Um, the strip, the particular one is G, R, B and W, which means green, red, blue, and then the white component uh, in that order. And each uh, individual LED gets the the eight bit encoded values in that order. So first comes the green, then comes the red, then the blue, and then the white. And the next one is for the next LED. There, this all those signals are daisy chained and pushed through the entire chain to change uh, all the values for uh, all individual LEDs. If you keep it like this, then for all LEDs at once. But if you define segments, then you can address individual ones from Home Assistant even. The variant is uh, an WS2812 and the pin on the ESP is, uh, in this case, I used pin 2. Number of LEDs already said and I gave it this name and this again is then for the light and it will pop up in Home Assistant as well. Now a bit of uh, definition work. So you can see that the strip is running in circles or in in turns actually. So it, it starts here. So the line from the translator reaches here in the middle and then it starts daisy chaining and uh, tr uh, rippling through the LEDs in that order and always the red cables are jumping over just bridging the gap in that way. And as you can see the first segment starts here it's uh, starting from zero so maybe let me copy in starting with partitioning it. This is the way to chop up a light into different pieces and for the first segment of this compartment one that is uh, the man that is walking that is that should be the green sign for it's allowed to come in so green green man that's um, why I call it green man zero one two three four that's the four first LEDs of this segment defined in that way so it runs from zero to four. Then it leaves this compartment and goes into the red one. And then it comes back. And now we need to count, do the counting. That was uh, LED 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 13 is the first one. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. And that is the next segment. Or, uh, yeah, next segment. Not segment, but the next... Um, sub segment kind of for this green man partition and that's it so it runs out on this strip goes into another one and then comes back and all of those leds belong now to, to each other and will light up as one 
for the segment Green Man. For the next one, I'm just copy pasting it because I prepared it on the side. It's just as the first one. So it goes from LED 5. So that is LED 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 in this first turn. And then it comes back uh, 13. So we know already which LED this one is. I didn't, don't need to do the counting again because we know that the last LED of Green Man, this is the first compartment, is 22. So the next one needs to be 23. And then we have 4, 5, 6 until 26. And that is the second one. And the other four remaining ones are actually very simple and straightforward because they're only running... Um, subsequent LEDs together for one compartment and then compartments changed so uh, the counting there is trivial I'll just copy paste them in so we have the gear here from 27 to 29 the on air sign and I'm referencing here of course the, the shade um, which is made for this compartment and this LED segmenting segmentation so gear on air and then goes over to meeting and to the phone. And that is what I just put in here. So door sign, sorry, on air is the next one, meeting, and last but not least, the phone. And that's it. How much simpler it can get. That is, in my opinion, that's the most simple way to express a firmware that slices up a continuous strip into different segments and then represents that to uh, another service like Home Assistant, an entire eco different ecosystem where you can then control the segments from. It blows my mind how simple that is. That is all there is to it to define this program. Now let's actually go down, save this. Very important, if you close this, everything is gone. Happened to me multiple times. That's a little quirk you need to know. For flashing, I need to take it out now from here this little module and I have a flasher, a flasher PCB. I need to press the button to bring it into flashing mode. Oh, that's actually correct. Now it should be in flash mode and I can hit install. I cannot go wireless because there's no uh, ESP yet on there. I want to use a plugged into the computer cable on a USB 0 and off you go. If you have compiled it in the past, the process will be faster because all the, the building blocks will be there already. It doesn't need to compile everything from scratch as it is now the case for me because I just tested it before and upfront. Um, so the compilation was actually really swift and fast and uh, it was I think done here already and now it's um, linking everything together telling me how much RAM and flash will be used and then starts to upload that and it's almost finished with that. Now I just need to take it out, plug it into my socket again, power that up and the last step is bringing it now over to Home Assistant, registering it, typing in the API key and start playing with it. Let's see if it actually works. So headed over to my Home Assistant entity. I go to Devices and add an integration. Type in ESP Home. And then we know that I called it Door Sign. And asks for the key, which I have somewhere. Success! And here we are. Now I can add it here quickly. Door sign. Delete those entities and search for red. And there, sure enough, we have door sign red man. We have green man, we want to have the gear, and that should be it. Save, call it done. 
Now, before we test it, I will close the lid. Otherwise, we all get. I know, actually, it's, let's try it without. Um, yeah, it's at Redman. And that looks very bright, but also very correct. Let's test the green man. Nice, all of this compartment light up. Nothing else. Gear looks good. Over the air looks good. Phone looks nice. And meeting. Yes. Awesome. Let's close it now. Needs to be pushed all the way in. So the template and the, um, the light former is recessed a bit. So it gives room to the light shade in the front. That was pinching my finger. It hurt. Not nice. And oops. And that is how it finally looks. You actually can see a bit of the cover shining through, but that is not an issue of this light. It's an issue how I printed the black cover part. Right, let's actually give them the right colors. So this should be red only. This should be green only, no white. The gear can stay actually white. I think it actually looks quite okay, but doesn't need to be as bright. Bright, right. Oh, on air is like it. A nice blue there for the phone. Let's um, try out what works. Maybe nice blue is cool. And then the meeting. Huh. What color has a meeting actually? Something orangish. Something like this. On the camera is a bit hard to pick up. This one should be a bit better, I think. Yes. And now I can have any automation controlling this. For example, if there's a meeting, I can have an integration into my calendar or whatever, putting that out to Home Assistant and Home Assistant will make sure that this light lights up in the right configuration and everything is nice and cool. Yeah, again, I, I didn't really put a lot of effort into bringing ESP Home onto this ESP module. I didn't have to mess with a lot of complicated things to structure the LED strip light into different segments, even ones that are not consecutive with each other, but uh, are because it's in the matrix, you need to specify which LEDs are actually belonging to the segment. Yeah, it is It is just simple. It is just working. It is a, a workhorse for me. It is a tool that is there for me to leverage and it just works out of the box with ease and like my quality of life is, is just awesome. I really love the system. I really love how nice it works. This light is, is out there and up there forever. I prepared it once and then never touched it again. It's always working. There's a, there's a battery in the, in the backside. That's it. It pops up in Home Assistant. I'm happy. It is such a great, great tool. I really love it. I can just recommend you testing if you haven't. And if you're playing with the thought, go for it. It is go for the Docker version. It is It cannot be simpler because Docker is taking care of all the setting up works and, and complicating things that you might end up with if you do it manually. You boot the Docker, you go to the web interface, you define the project in the web browser, you upload or download whatever you like to the light and it, it, it's, it's just as simple and just as cool as that. It's a great system. If you liked what I did here, I would be really, really happy if you expressed that by, you know what, and yeah, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, gonna do a couple of more of those lights and then um, probably do some other projects that also are related maybe to this light and why there are two strips going to either side. Stay tuned for the next one and until then, I'm Bushi, have a good one, over and out. Bye.